Hi guys, thanks for stopping back to Pete's Garage. Well, we're at this point in the build series where we have to start talking about painting, or I'd like to start talking about painting, and I'm going to do it now for a couple reasons. First of all, you might be, at this point, you might want to paint your engine because it's very easy, parts are, it's not completely assembled. Now, with the Cobra engine, what I've been doing is I've had the, paint, uh, the parts painted and I've been assembling them with, with the parts painted. But you have to be careful with that because if the parts are painted, when you put them together, you run the risk of chipping the paint or when you go to dyno test it or install the engine, of chipping the paint and have them go back and touch it up. And if you have an epoxy paint or difficult color to match, it's going to show up. Now, you could do that the way I was working on the Cobra engine. That's perfectly okay. You can do that. I chose to do it with that particular engine. Or you can wait till the engine's fully assembled. Now, I don't have the oil pan on the the oil pan or the uh, timing chain cover on the Cobra engine yet, but I do have this engine completely assembled. This is a 350 Chevy motor. It's a 383 stroked, and it's already been dyno checked. It's about uh, 450, 460 horsepower. Now, since this engine is all assembled, uh, it's good time to paint it. It's, it's, it's painted as, after it's assembled and after it's been dyno tested because now that it's been dyno tested, you're sure that the engine doesn't leak and it's perfectly tuned so when you put it in, it's going to start. You won't run the risk of having to take it out again. So it's, this engine is running, tuned, dialed in, ready to put in a vehicle and ready to run. But customer wants it painted. So I have to take some of it apart, I have to do some prepping before I can paint it, and then I have to do some masking. But let me show you, we'll go over this in a little bit of detail before I start masking it. I'll mask it and then we'll, uh, I'll show you how we're going to get a paint and what kind of paint I'm going to use and why I'm going to use the certain paints I'm going to use. Okay, I'll start by taking off all of my spark plug wires, my wire looms, keeping everything in order, and then I'll take top off the distributor. Pull off the nice black anodized timing pointer. Take off my lift bracket. I'm going to take off the distributor bracket, but before I do, I'm going to put a small line on a distributor and a small line on the bracket so I can make sure I put it right back where it started because this engine, as I said, has been on a dyno and it's perfectly tuned and perfectly timed. I don't want to screw that up on the customer. Now I'm ready to mask off the engine so I can paint it. But there are a couple things I want to pay attention to and I want to take care of while I'm masking it. And one of them is going to be, you see this uh, the sealer, thread sealer. I want to clean this up because that'll look like hell when it's painted. Uh, you can see on this plug there's also some some thread sealant that I want to get rid of. Uh, on the back, let's see, on the back of this plug there's a little red. I want to get rid of that. That'll look like hell. So I want to clean that up. Um, the water pump, I'm going to mask that off. Or I'm sorry, the fuel pump. Mask that off. The plugs will mask off all that. So those will look pretty good. And I'll mask off the exhaust ports. This plug, not too bad. And the valve covers, I'll mask off uh, right up to that gasket. The oil pan is going to get painted. Uh, this plug down here, it looks like there's some nylon tape on there. I'll have to clean that up just to make sure that looks right. Let's see if there's anything else I want to take care of. Oh, the oil filter. I'll pull the oil filter off, clean it up, plug that, make sure it doesn't leak. And there's some uh, there's some uh, nylon tape around that plug. I'll fix that up. This plug as well. There's some there. So I got a little cleanup to do. Then I'll mask it off, and uh, by then it should be ready to paint. Okay, so now our engine is ready to paint. I got everything masked off. Uh, just a couple things I did that I didn't think I was going to do. When I got around a distributor here, it looked like uh, it was going to be really difficult to, it wouldn't be difficult to mask off, but it would be difficult to spray around. So I decided to pull the distributor out. Now before I did that, I made sure I marked where the rotor was, what timing it was at, and what position the distributor was inside the, uh, 
the block in, in through the manifold. So I made a mark there so I can put it exactly back exactly where it was. Because again, this engine, engine's been on a dyno. I did that. Um, what else did I end up taking out? Oh, I ended up taking out the spark plugs. I took out the spark plugs because they would have been a little difficult to paint around as well. So I took out the spark plugs. But everything is all masked off. Uh, there's no significance to the tinfoil other than I like to use it for things like this because it's very easy to work with. You can fold it and it'll stay in place rather than trying to bend paper and uh, it doesn't give off any fiber so it's really really clean. Now before I take this and get this into the paint booth over there where I'm going to paint uh, there's a couple things you have to do. Number one, first and foremost, clean the surface. So I'm going to take about a half an hour and I'm going to clean the entire surface thoroughly with lacquer thinner. I'm going to clean off all the bolt surfaces. I'm going to clean off all the places where the plugs are so there's no silicone. I'm going to clean off the entire manifold, all the bolt heads. Everything has got to be completely grease free or else the paint will never stick. Let me get this clean and when I do we'll talk about paint. Okay guys, now that I have the entire engine cleaned, I wiped it down, wiped out as many surfaces as I can, all the bolt heads, uh, all, the, all the balancer, the block, the oil pan, I wiped it all down. Now you could very easily if you don't have the ability, you could easily just paint it with the typical rattle can paints like a VHT, plastic coat, engine paint, those kind of things. Uh, but there's a couple things to consider and you might want to uh, look into uh, adding a step when you do paint your engine for this reason. And um, the reason is, if you look at your engine, you have many different kinds of surfaces and many different kinds of metals. You have a cast iron block. You have steel plugs. I have a cadmium plated oil pan and timing chain cover. I have a oil pump, or I'm, I'm sorry, the water pump in front that's already painted black, which I cleaned up. You have a steel gear up front. I have aluminum heads. I have an aluminum intake. There's brass plugs, stainless steel bolts. Uh, what else we have in here? Uh, zinc plated steel plugs. So there's what, maybe five or six different types of metals five or six different types of coatings that the paint is going to have to adhere to. And when you have that many different coatings or different surfaces you want to coat, uh, you have to consider this, thermal expansion. Think about this for a moment. If you have an engine in a vehicle, and depending on where you live, if you live up north, your vehicle could sit outside, it could be minus 20 degrees, minus 30 degrees even, even if it's zero, let's say it's zero degrees to make it easy. You start your car, you start this engine, it warms up, Thermostat opens at 195 degrees. Now this engine just went from zero degrees to 195 degrees in roughly, what, 15, 20 minutes? That's a 200 degree swing. And the aluminum, the cast iron, the brass, the stainless steel, everything is gonna expand at a different rate. So if you have the aluminum expanding faster than the cast iron, the paint that's also on top of that is gonna expand at a different rate. So you run a chance of it separating more. So thermal expansion is one thing to consider. The other one is uh, or thermal cycling, because thermal cycling, if you're going to do it many times a day, it goes 0, 200. It might lose, cool down to 50, up to 200, up and down, up and down. That thermal cycling is what really kills paint. Secondly, you have the uh, different uh, moisture concerns, okay? L let's say uh, the, the engine is in a, a moist climate, so it's going to get wet. Then you're going to heat it up and it's going to dry out then it's going to get moist again. So moisture is going to go back and forth on the engine. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're painting your engine, you're painting your car, or you're painting your shutters on your house. There's going to be moisture and there's going to be thermal expansion, okay? The moisture is going to, when you have thermal expansion, the pores on the paint are going to open up, you get moisture on it. When they close up, the moisture is going to get in. That's how rust starts, okay? Now, same thing with shutters on your house. They can see the same temperature. It could even be more. It could be zero to maybe 300 degrees. Who knows? But thermal expansion and moisture are the biggest killers of paint. So, what do you do when you have so many different base materials that you want to coat? I've used this video before. I have a video about painting with epoxies. And this is a AmeriCoat. This is AmeriCoat 385 Red Oxide Resin. It's an epoxy metal etching primer. And it's made by PPG. It's a PPG product. And I use it on many different things. I've used it on uh, all kinds of surfaces, including uh, some vibration dampeners that are right now in an oil rig in the North Sea on an oil rig. So this is for extreme climates 
extreme environments, harsh environments, thermocycling, salt water, all kinds of uh, different weather conditions, this is made for. It's also made for different kinds of metal. I have I put it on stainless steel, I put it on steel, I put it on uh, titanium, I put it on iron, different kinds of things, and it'll work on brass as well. So this primer, this metal etch primer is going to do a couple things for us. Number one, it's going to create a base coat. It's going to create an even color between the black, the cadmium, the, the aluminum, the cast iron. It'll be an even color, so when you put the paint on or the color, it'll be easy to cover it, and you'll be able to see how it covers. Secondly, it's going to etch in the metal. Now, when it etches into the metal, it's going to um, provide a better bond. And it's called the grip strength of the material, grip strength of the primer. It's going to provide a better grip strength. So when you have the thermal cycling and when you have the moisture uh, on top of it, it's not going to affect it. It's going to grip into the material. It's not going to leave pores open. And it's going to provide a great surface for the paint to go on and the paint to stick to. So think about that when you're painting, whatever you're painting, whether it's an engine or you're painting a, I don't know, painting a chair in your house, think about those things. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but painting is a huge science in itself, and if you study it, it's really cool. So learn a little bit about the materials you're using, always follow the manufacturer's recommendations, and use it in the right temperatures, uh, right mixtures. This is mixed one-to-one, -one, so I'm going to mix that as epoxy, so i got to be protected. So let's take this over to the paint booth. Put some primer on it and we'll get some color on it. Now just like any paint, just like paint a car, I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. Now I can let that completely cure, completely cure, and then we'll put some color on it. Now before we paint the engine, let's talk real quick about engine paints. After you do your primer, now if you're going to do this, if you're going to use a spray can like a, a Duplicolor or, or VHT, that kind of thing, if you're going to prime that, it's going to take quite a few cans. In order to paint this and prime this engine the way it is right now, I used roughly half a quart of primer. Uh, so you're going to need a few cans if you're going to do an entire engine like this, if you're going to use a rattle can. Now these, these kind of paints are perfectly fine. I've used them several times. You go up to 500 degrees. But um, they're not the optimum. It's not bad, but it's not the best, okay? Now the, uh, the engine I painted, the, the Cobra engine is painted with this high temp ceramic engine paint from Eastwood. Uh, this is a really good good paint. I like this material because it has a ceramic in it. It's got the ceramic chips. It makes it very durable and it's re really glossy. It looks gorgeous. Now, the this customer wanted this engine painted satin black and there are not a ton of options for satin black paint. Uh, they don't even have an engine color for satin black. So what I did is I talked to Eastwood. They had this uh, 2K, it's a ceramic just like the uh, engine paint, it's ceramic paint. Uh, it's a chassis black, it's a semi-gloss. Now this is good up to 300 degrees and they said it would be fine to paint an engine with so I'm, I'm going to be using this. Uh, I would normally like to use a higher temperature, you know, 500 degree or 600 degree paint but since your engine really doesn't get over 250 degrees, it might peak at 300 but they said this would be fine. So I'm using it, I'm going on their recommendation. It's my first time using this particular kind of paint on an engine, but it's a satin black. So, I'm also going to be using a small spray gun, uh, my small DeVilvis finish line spray gun, and this is a great little spray gun for projects like this because you can, there, there's many different angles in here, and if you just spray like this, if you just take your spray gun and spray, you wouldn't get all the spots. So you have to take this, you have to turn this down to a point, turn your air down, and you have to get real close and you have to go real slow around all these angles because you have to maintain the 90 degrees to the surface of the, uh, uh, that you're painting in order to get the paint on there. And then I have to get behind here and I have to paint the timing chain cover and I have to get all, all behind all this stuff. So a small gun like this is great for doing things like this. Especially in the manifold as well. I have to get in the manifold. I have to get underneath the, the valve cover. I have to get around in all these little little pockets and you don't want to put too much on because it'll run. It just it's just like regular paint will run. So let me get this mixed up. We'll start painting. We'll see how we look, how we do. And just like the primer, I'll do all the cutting in on all the small corners and behind 
the water pump and inside the timing chain cover first. Okay, now that the paint is cured, I can do some assembly here. I'll slide my distributor in and make sure I have the timing mark lined up with where it's got to be and where it's got to be in a tight timing position. After that, I can drop on my distributor cap and on my wires. And put my Oops, don't want to drop any nuts or washers into the manifold. I'll just put my lift bracket back on, bolt it up, and we'll be done. So there you have it guys, engine painting and how to paint your engine. Now if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send me an email or a text message and I answer them as soon as I can. Thanks for being patient and I, I appreciate everyone being patient. It takes a while for me to answer them sometimes, but I will get back to your messages. And if you're an expert or if you work in this field and there's any tips or tricks you can share with us, uh, feel free to leave a comment and let us know your suggestions because we're all here to learn. I'm always learning every day. So I, I don't ever claim to know everything and I'm always interested in your comments and uh, what you can do to help us all learn. So I appreciate that. And I really appreciate you stopping by Peace Garage.